Prime Speaker Zagana just got murked, and you, Nelly Borka, simply will not have your big boss Aurelia arrested for this crime. Best way to go about that? Non-stop accusations of anyone you can lay eyes on. The face commander of the Blame Game Precon is Nelly Borka, impulsive accuser. That's not the best adjective you want in your detective, but even with words, Boros be staying on the attack. The impulsive accuser will first suspect a target creature when she attacks. Then she will goad all suspected creatures. Suspected is a new mechanic in the Murders at Karlov Manor set and means the afflicted creature has menace but also can't block. But it's not all downside for your opponents. If their creatures, suspected or not, break through to deal combat damage to another opponent, they get to draw a card. And so do you. The flavor of an aggressive detective pitting everyone against each other to make sure her faction comes out on top is really well done. It got me interested even before all the rest of the cool stuff in the 99. Speaking of which, Fiendish Duo is the premier reprint here, with its only other English copy costing nearly $40 at the time of recording. Even better, it fits well in the deck as a top-end payoff, because if things are going to plan, all your opponent's creatures will be swinging at each other, and thanks to the duo, doing double the damage when they break through to hit face. Other reprinted creatures include Loran of the Third Path, Darien, King of Keldor, Gisela, Blade of Gold Knight, and Brash Taunter. $7 Loran of the Third Path destroys a target artifact or enchantment on ETB, and has card draw upside. It's also standard season. She's legal in that format and is a nice one of in some sideboards. $4 Darien King of Keldor makes attacking you a tough pill to swallow, because if they don't finish the job, you'll have soldier reinforcements prepared to take their vengeance. $3 Gisela Blade of Gold Knight does what the Fiendish Duo does, but better, and also halves the damage done to you. The last creature is $2.50 Brash Taunter. He's a jerk and really punishes your opponent for casting Chonky Boys. The combination of the activatable fight ability, indestructible, and the redirection of damage to players can be devastating, if not game-ending. The Instant Comeuppance is another prize reprint. It's currently priced at $12 and is a 3 into white spell that not only prevents damage to you, but also redirects the damage back to the source. For creatures, the damage is redirected at them. For non-creatures, the damage is redirected to the source's controller. If you haven't redirected an infinite mana burn spell back to that player, you're not alone. I haven't either. But that's one of those things, one of those moments that keeps me coming back for more. Smuggler Share and Ghostly Prison are the two enchantments worth shouting out for this reprint section at 650 and 350 respectively. Smuggler Share is looking out for your opponent's actions to draw you cards or make you treasures. Ghostly Prison is Pillow Fort Incarnate, taxing your opponent's two mana for each creature they want to attack you with. With the knowledge of what the commander does and these top level reprints, we can piece together what this deck is trying to do. Step 1, incentivize and force your opponents to attack each other. Step 2, make sure attacking you is an unsavory prospect. And step 3, as always, profit. Vengeful Ancestor, Disrupt Decorum, and Spectacular Showdown are spells that will force your enemies to attack each other. Agitator Ant, Duelist Heritage, and Shiny Impetish will push them in that direction while Windborn Muse, Kazool, Tyrant of the Cliffs, and Deflecting Palm will make your opponents think twice before attacking you. Out of the box, there's a good amount of support to set this game plan in motion, and I expect it to perform well for a precon. Now, I don't think it's as strong as the Merfolk or Dinosaur precon from Lost Caverns of Ixalan, but it's right there with the Vampire one. If this is the new normal for power level we should expect out of the box, I'm all for it. Alright, let's get into my favorite part of the video, reviewing new spells released as a part of this precon. But before that, make your way down the page and subscribe to the channel.
Feather, Radiant Arbiter, is the new iteration of this character who is one of the most popular Boros commanders. Off the bat, a 3 mana 4 3 flying lifelinker is juiced. I'm not saying she's on steroids, all I'm saying is that I wouldn't be surprised if it turns out she was. She's got this cool ability that when she is targeted with a spell, you can pay 2 mana to copy that spell, targeting another creature you control until you run out of mana or creatures to target. You may be thinking, isn't this a way worse Zada Hedron Grinder? In some respects, yes. But Feather isn't limited to instants or sorceries. Enchantment auras like Ethereal Armor, Sticky Fingers, and Hyena Umbra can also be copied by this ability. I don't think she fits in for what this precon is trying to do, but as her own commander, she'll be plenty of fun to build around. Front runner for my favorite card printed in 2024 is Prisoner's Dilemma, named after the famous game theory thought experiment. Your opponents need to secretly select Snitch or Silence. They all choose Snitch, it's 4 damage to each. They all choose Silence, it's 8 damage to each. If they aren't in unison, only the opponents that chose Silence take 12 damage. These quick minigame diversions from the real game make for some of the most memorable moments, and this card captures the spirit of its namesake perfectly. Hot Pursuit can be a 2 mana win condition later in the game. It comes down, suspects a creature, and goads it until the enchantment leaves the battlefield. That's solid for this strategy, especially because if the enchantment does get removed, the suspected creature will remain goaded due to Nelly Borka's ability. Then, if you've done a good job choosing suspects and removing players, this second bit could be game over. You take control of all suspected creatures and give them haste at the beginning of combat on your turn, but only after two or more players have lost the game. You can't call this a reliable way to win the game, but by golly, converting all the suspects to your side to close out a game sounds hilarious. Immortal Obligation in some cases will be hugely impactful, but in others could be a dead card. This features the rarely found enemy creature recursion. It will come back goaded, unable to attack you or permanents you control, and unable to block your creatures, so that's nice. But if there aren't any good targets in graveyards, or worse, things that are too good to bring back, you'll end up wishing you had something else in your 99. Redemption Arc is kind of the spiritual successor to Darksteel Mutation that not only can mitigate an opposing threat, but also offers flexibility to wear it yourself. Nelly Borka wants to attack and suspect creatures near and far, but if there are no attacks she can live through, your game plan becomes less potent. This enchantment lets her attack at will and gives her an out when targeted with spells like Song of the Dryads. Or you can strap it to your opponent's creature for them to rip through the game and then activate the enchantment and exile the creature when the time is right. Mob Verdict is a voting card that is a pseudo board wipe with card draw upside. It'll have its moments, but for the most part, you're invested in your opponent's creatures being alive, suspected, and attacking your opponents. You're walking a very fine line if you cast this spell, and if you're looking at it as a board wipe, you're better off running the million other white board wipe spells. Otherworldly Escort is one of the new pieces designed to keep aggression off of you. At 4 power, when this flashes in to block, it'll take care of most creatures. Then it will return even more powerful. It'll keep the same stats, but gain a tap ability that can straight up destroy a creature that dealt damage to you. Take the Bait is another of the preventative measures found in the deck, negating all combat damage dealt to you and planeswalkers you control for the turn. The best part is that the attacking player gets an extra combat phase with all their creatures goaded. They'll either wreck or get wrecked by an opponent. Or if it's one on one, you'll have bought yourself a turn with most if not all their creatures tapped. 
Trouble in Pairs wins the best newly printed card in the pre-con, as you either get flooded with cards, which you'll hopefully be able to convert to victory, or slows the game way down if your opponents play around it. It's an enchantment that draws you a card when an opponent attacks you with two creatures, draws their second card in a turn, or casts their second spell in a turn. Top end is seven cards a turn. Now, if that happens to you, please invite me to the next game with that playgroup. Realistically, you can expect a card, maybe two, during a turn cycle, which is still great. And the slowed down play in this deck gives you more and more opportunities to identify suspects. Ransom Note is an artifact clue that has a few other bells and whistles. It does fine here. Could be fun in a cloak slash morph deck or clue deck, but it's nothing special. Havoc Eater is the last of the new spells, and is a fearsome 7-drop that does the thing by goading a creature of your choice controlled by each opponent when entering the battlefield. And that 3-3 stat line is just a front. It gets counters, and a lot of them, based on the total power of the creatures you goaded with its ETB effect. I like this a lot as a top-end threat in this deck, relieving pressure with the goad and likely growing to 10 or more power as a flyer. Last thing we gotta do is take the blame game to the next level with a series of upgrades and removals. There will be a hyper-budget upgrade video in the future with 10 ads and cuts for only $10, but for now, let's look at 5, with budget only slightly on the mind. I like to start with the same set when I can, and two cards jumped out at me. The first, Agris Cost, Spirit of Justice, is exactly the kind of creature this deck needs. On ETB and Attack, you choose to either suspect a creature or exile a suspected creature. This will have a huge impact at every point in the game, but especially when it's down to two players. When attacking with him and Nelly Borka, you can have her suspect a creature and follow that up with the Spirit of Justice exiling that same creature. He is a mythic rare, so based on averages, it may be out of some people's price range. But the other MKM card is a lowly uncommon, convenient target. It's only a single red to enchant a creature, granting it plus one plus one, and suspect. This will save you the trouble of targeting a creature with Nelly's ability, while still reaping the goading reward. Later in the game, it's a nice mana sink, with you able to pay three to get it back in your hand to make some more accusations. Taunt from the Rampart is one of those spells that, in a creature meta, is a real gut punch. Precon and upgraded precon level play generally fits that bill, which is why this mass goading and no blocking spell will wreck your opponent's life totals. And if the impulsive accuser is on the battlefield, you'll be drawing cards on top of it. With those extra cards and most, if not all, your opposing creatures tapped, you'll be looking good to close out the game. War's Toll is a mean card, but when you're forcing your opponent's creatures to attack when goading them, forcing their other creatures to tag along could mean the end of the line for the ones that just never planned on going to combat. Not to mention always having their shields down for when it rolls back to your turn. It also messes with your opponent's mana, which can lead to difficult decisions for them. And I get it, this isn't the kind of card for every group. But if your group is into them, let the war take its toll. Last edition is Bothersome Quasit. Over half the playables in your deck are non-creature spells, so you will be getting value out of the creature's last ability. Then it makes it so goaded creatures can't block. Generally, they'll be tapped, but on the same turn you goad them, it could mean safe passage for Nelly to attack, suspecting and goading yet another unsuspecting creature. I already talked about Feather, Radiant Arbiter not fitting in here, and she will be the first cut. There's barely any support for her ability, and even though the stat line and keywords are good, they aren't good enough to stick around. Winds of Wrath is a board wipe that only spares enchanted creatures. You will be enchanting some creatures with this deck, but largely your opponent's creatures. I don't mind a board wipe now and again, but an asymmetrical board wipe that isn't strictly advantageous for me is whack. For those interested in building Feather, this spell will be a house. 
Right of the Raging Storm has nothing on the card that makes your opponents attack with it, so they could just let it sit there until it dies. Worst case scenario, your opponents have ETB or LTB or sacrifice payoffs, and all you're doing is helping them more than you're helping yourself. Soul Snare is cool as a budget pillow fort piece, disincentivizing attacks against you. It's better suited though in decks with more enchantment synergies. Frankly, you're playing white, so there's a good chance everyone at the table expects you to have swords or path. Might as well just run those for half the mana cost. The last cut is the latest battle in my campaign against Atali Primal Storm. There is nothing in the deck that gives this haste. There's no synergy for casting your opponent's spells or casting spells from exile. It's got no place here. Go home, Atali. I don't want to play with you anymore. And that does it, folks. Thanks for watching. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let me know your must add card to the Blame Game Precon. I'll catch you next time for some more Monkeying Around.